never fails. When you need to go somewhere and use your car, you notice the green splatter or a little bit of dripping below it, your radiator starts leaking. Well, today I'm going to show you a very quick, easy, and inexpensive way to fix your own radiator at home with stuff that you already have in your garage. Well, you should have in your garage if you're a home mechanic that will make your life easier, that you don't have to bring it anywhere and hope that the repair shop does a good job. So follow along my step-by-step -step on this. It's quite simple. All you need is a, a really powerful soldering iron above 100 watts, maybe a, a small butane torch, non-rosin core so solder, a wire brush, some soap to see leaks, and a bicycle tube. Well, preferably a BMX 20 inch or 24 inch tire. That'll work, uh, the tire tube, because that will get it just right. So come along and let's take a look at how to get this done in your own garage by yourself. And I know people out there that work on radiators for a living on a comment on this and listen to whatever they say because they do this for a living i'm doing this at home to try to get my radiator fixed after one of those repair places did it twice and had it leaking both times so you know comment if you've done something similar to this comment if you have any tips because this is one of those things that seems intimidating but honestly it's just process so Let's get to it. What I'm doing is I have a cap on there. If you have a, if you use an air compressor, this is a heck of a lot easier because you can just float right up. I'm using a foot pump because, well, I'll just show you, you can use a foot pump. And my damage is here, so I kind of hooked up so I can keep leverage on it. So let me show you quite simply how this whole setup works. All right, so. Put the tube on there, put nice hose clamps nice and tight. If you end up having to do it like I do and you, you messed up, you fold it on in itself, use some uh, wire ties, and you start pumping. And you start pumping with your hand. There's air going in there. Don't, don't be scared by that. It's a bicycle tube. Okay. I got, I got a fair amount of pressure in there. Okay. And then what I like to do is take some simple greens. Yeah, I have a leak there. And up here, I did this seam. I think I did a video. I did this seam uh, in the car. And it came out okay. It's still a little. So I'm going to clean that up and float it sideways because that's where the seam runs. It's hard to do it in the car. And I think there's another one right there that I'm going to check. So we're going to do one side at a time. The hard part is that you need to get a really good soldering gun that is a uh, variable temperature that can get pretty hot. Um, I have one I bought on Amazon. As you see, it's digital and I can get to a temperature and this needs this is gonna to need to be pretty hot. You can set the temperature. Because I, I need to like basically melt this. That's five hundred degrees. And uh and so we're gonna kinda of work on this. I'm hoping I'm hoping that there's so much solder here, I'm hoping I can just refloat it. You know, we just turn it to liquid, and that's why I have this wrench on here. The, I had made a rig with, the, with an old connector, and I can't find the old connector. I, I, I put it someplace safe, like we always do, and I can't find it. But this will work in a pinch. This is just a connector for a uh, air conditioning line. It's brass, so it won't get damaged. And I just got to kind of float and fix that. So let me uh, get some get some ooh, let me get some soldering down on this. I'm trying to 
I was trying hopefully just to melt the solder and fill in the it's not sitting right up against there's like a gap here it was bubbling up so I'm gonna have to take a Dremel and we're gonna Dremel out and clean this so then we can actually put good solder against the the fitting because this side is actually it bonded for some reason it may not after I'm done but I can work one side at a time and then take this out okay so we're gonna work on this cordless Dremel works best a little diamond bit Let's see oh it's too close see <sighs> Okay, so after uh, much struggle, because this was not pretty, this is where I am. I'll get some more light in there. So you can see that down on the bottom, you see that like that brass stuff. See how filthy that is? Old radio, old uh, coolant, just kind of is on there. It's a little corroded, so it wasn't clean enough for it to heat. So. Okay, so. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to the old man manual way. But you just want to make sure that looks shiny so it adheses as well. As you see, the whole thing's moving, so that means we've gotten all the support solder out. So, what we're doing now is making this so the solder will stick. And you want it nice and shiny on all sides. Soldering begin. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of set that there because I lost my rig to that I pulled it up with. So now I'm just gonna kind of pull it up and get the solder to flow in there. I set it at like 350. Flowing, flow the solder in there. We took a lot of solder out, so just a little bit of time, just heat it. And we just go around and do that. Hey, so, okay, so after much persistence, because when you're doing this at home, what you, you have available, kind of making stuff work, is persistence. So it's not gorgeous, but that's not leaking. It's just, I, that's the simple green, no bubbles, pretty smooth. Not bad, actually, in my own opinion. But, you know, paint that black. Can't tell it's been worked on. So that one is all done. Uh, the only one left now is to do up there. We got to turn everything around and fill that in. So basically, take your time to, and just let it. You have to get it. My soldering iron is at the bottom end of being able to do this at 500 degrees. Uh, you probably be better off finding a, a very high watt soldering iron, which I'm probably going to get myself. I thought that one would be enough just to get it so it can flow. But it was just a lot of persistence with it and getting it to flow into the crevasses, as they say. Okay. So we'll, we'll do the uh, top side and then we'll kind of take a look at this. All right. We'll move on. All right, so this is what we have on the top. 
when this happens a lot, it's right at the seam where the tank, the top tank, meets the core. And there's two spots. There's one here, which I was relatively new. It's still... And then here. These are a little bit easier because you're just filling the seam in. That, that other, the doing the actual uh, oil inlet on an automatic transmission is uh, very unpleasant. So I'm going to start working on that. Okay. Same technique where you just kind of work away at it, clean it up real well, and then float, float the uh, solder in there. Okay, so we've done all that work, and now we need to test it. Now, a, a few things, okay? I just tried a 10-speed uh, bicycle tire. Probably need like a BMX 20-inch tire. Uh, it's a little fatter, probably a little bit heavier than this. It still does work. It's just, yeah, that, this is this is hack. Um, yeah. Uh, the other thing is that soldering iron, you need, I had a hundred watt, it made it very hard to do this. I was having to kind of brush over a little bit with my um, butane torch, just kind of glance over it just to kind of get a little extra heat in there. And yeah, that was a little, that, that kind of stunk. But nevertheless, this is our repair. Take a nice close look. It's 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 soldered, and then the bolt's clear. I mean, not as nice as the professional job, but this was a professional job over here, and um, yeah, not that far off. But it, I'm gonna show you, it doesn't leak, because that's the that is the end all, the be all for importance at this point. And once again, we're gonna get our uh, okay, so. Once again, we're going to get our handy-dandy uh, simple green. No sponsorship, but I just like it because it's natural, and it's not caustic, and it's pretty good and safe. doesn't have any weird fumes. So you spray it on there, and we start pumping and pumping and pumping pumping. And we pump, I mean, we, we, we pump that thing blown up like a balloon. And um, there's 16 pounds in there, easy. And it is clean. That is a complete repair. And of course, take the cap and let all, take the cap, let all the pressure out. Yay. Okay. So the repair process is now done. This radiator is done of course something else is going to happen because it's an old car so now we just have to uh rinse it out outside to get all any of the shavings from when we did the dremeling i gotta take that outside uh because you know down in down in there there's going to be like you know shavings that fell in and we'll just rinse it out and then we'll back we'll back flush it we'll make sure it's nice and clean and that's how you do this so hopefully you got some from this, you know, do those things, you know, the, and comment. I, I, I want your comments on it because I asked in the beginning, you know, and now after you've watched it, tell me what you think because it works, it's hacky, and it ain't, it's not pretty, but uh, it's effective. And at, at the end of the day, isn't that all we need? Is it to be effective? So, all right. I'll catch you next time. And as always, take those cars out to make your day and someone else's. And once again, I'll catch you, to, I'll catch you tomorrow. Bye.